Hello friends, you're with a lonesome gamer and I'm playing Darkest Night. And well, it's a pretty smooth ride overall until now. Um We have here four blights, which is obviously not too good, but unless I'm planning to go there, I don't really see a big problem with that. Um, we got three blights in the village, three in the swamp, the other areas are fine. So um, the idea is now to go to the village with, uh, with uh, my group and to get rid of these blights here. For the moment we have already four clues and most of our heroes have improved their powers quite a bit. So um, I think I'm not gonna try to yeah to, to, to draw a ton of additional power cards for now but I'm at the point where I try to uh, come to the second part of the quest which is basically collect clue tokens as I said luckily we already have four and then we're gonna attack the um, um, the necromancer the he's at six the darkness track is at six so it's very early in the game and we're really on a good um, really doing very well here we have a mystery here, the trials, that could give us potentially a lot of um, yeah, a lot of um, a lot of clue tokens. A hero can, as an action, draw event cards like crazy, and. until he loses stealth or grace he um, he can get additional clue tokens or until the hero leaves the location so I guess for example if he dies and we would don't want to remove that's so <coughs> actually an interesting question let's assume the hero dies uh, because we do not um, decrease um, our grace to keep the card here. Does that mean he leaves the location? I guess so. Um, although it's not a moving out of the location, but he's definitely no longer there. Okay. Um, We well, have some some interesting mechanics here. For example, I know that the that the Valkyrie has the option to ignore debt and just to and the hero loses a turn instead. There's a card somewhere here. So that could be, for example, one of these uh one of these situations where you do not want to spend grace and you, you prefer dying instead then you can ignore that effect again because of the Valkyrie's special ability which she doesn't have at the moment it's somewhere here in the power cards but I know it exists because I played her before and then um, uh, another hero for example could also do an action here so that um, that's kinda interesting but anyway that is all pure speculation for now I want to go to the village, get rid of some of these, and uh, let me see. I think I actually will start with the bard because I got a hide. Um, I definitely want this rousing melody get to work, and to do that, um, first we have to refresh it. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a, an event card for the bard. Ah, uh, that says blink. That doesn't look good. It's a six. So, hmm. We're gonna roll three dice. 
No, it's one die. And we got to move somewhere else. That's a one. Oh, move to the mountains. Well, okay, cool. No problems here for me. I was lucky with that one. And first we're going to flip all these markers. Okay, and then and I I wonder if no, I don't think so actually. Hmm. Yeah, I'm fine. Now I'm going to flip these. I'm going to hide. That means I flip Wait a minute. No, 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 no. What I'm going to do is, and I'm going to do that at the start of the turn. I just started the video, so I wasn't completely into it, right? And what I want to do is, I want to give the guy, and I can do that. I can, I'm, I'm going to give him the ghost mail. So at the start of his turn, he's now allowed to spend a stealth to gain a... Um, To gain a grace up to his default value and I'm gonna do that I'm gonna spend a grace a stealth and that gives him a grace now I'm gonna hide and when I'm hiding I'll yeah I gain one stealth and I'm allowed to refresh all my powers awesome and then I'm gonna give this thing to let's give it to her back to her okay cool fine let's see yep and finally we got to I want to fight these shades so I can use my tactics here, my trickery, and I'm good. Okay, cool. So that was his turn. Then we're gonna use we're gonna use the scout. And the scout At the start of her turn, she will also use the ghost mail. And we really could have done that the turn before. I forgot that. We would have been in a better shape if we did. But okay, I mean, I, I didn't want to cheat. I, would, I didn't want to go back, you know. I realized that nearly by the end of the turn. But now, I, I definitely want to do that. So we're going to reduce this now by one, which gives me one more grace. And... I also want to trade this thing here and give that to her. And then I'm going to draw a card. An event card. Okay, that is a dilemma. Sometimes it seems as if the necromancer were everywhere at once. Draw a quest and roll one die to determine its location. Then draw another quest and draw or roll one die to determine its location. Okay, we'll see how bad that is. Could be also to our advantage. Um, so, first one. Nightmares. A young girl has had a prophetic dream warning of an imminent disaster. The details are unclear but the matter is desperately urgent. Okay, so um, we got two turns. We need a single success and we got to spend a grace to gain a success during the action phase in this location. If we do it, we get a charm. Let's see what that, what that does. Discard them after, after making a die roll to re-roll all dice. No, that's not a bad thing. If we don't do it, there'll be three new quests there. Mm -hmm. That could be a problem. Um, so let's see where that shows up. 
Six, that comes in handy, that's in the village. Okay, so that should not, I'm pretty sure we can do that. Um, and we've got to draw another one. Now that says, without a trace. Something is stealing children from the local populace without leaving any witnesses. Track it to its lair, or we will lose the sympathy of the townsfolk. Hmm. Okay, um, that kind of sucks. So we need a one success, and we got to do it in a successful elude test versus six. That is not easy, and it's an action. So mm, that's a pretty big deal. We got five turns. That's a lot. If we're good, we're nearly done with the game um, in five turns. If we complete the quest, we get an epiphany. Epiphany is super strong because it allows us to search a power deck, the power deck of the of the hero who 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 has this epiphany, and to to draw one to pick one card from the deck. That's really awesome. And uh, if it expires, then all heroes lose two stealth. That is not good at all. However, by the very end of the game, it might not be such a problem if the heroes lose stealth, because we have to confront the necromancer anyway. Um, therefore, maybe we will ignore this thing because it, it's pretty hard to do. But we'll see about that. We'll, we'll see where it is. That's a four. So that means it's in the castle. Yeah, I have my doubts that I'm gonna go there. So... Pure guys from the castle. First the zombies. Now the evil presence and obviously this evil presence somehow makes children disappear. Yeah, okay, cool, but uh, yeah, the poor people there. Oh, there was this ghoul infestation too. Yeah, they, they really have a hard time in the castle. After we took all their supply, now they're in trouble. But okay, that is uh, such as life, right? We want to save the kingdom, not a few people in the castle. So, um, and then it's our turn, or the, the action phase. And what I want to do is I want to use my explore action, which allows me to travel and then refresh all my powers. Um, oh, so, uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to move with her to the village. This gives me a stealth. I'm going to lose one grace though, because uh, uh, because of the curse. But I'm allowed to refresh all this stuff here. Now I'm considering... Hmm, let me think about that a little. There was something... I think it was the ashes which would have allowed me to ignore the effects of blights. So I could save myself a... Hmm. You know, I think I want to do that. I think I'm going to spend the ashes. Or do I? No, I'm not. Before I move, I'm going to give the ashes to him. That's what I do. Then I move to the village, and that's fine. Okay, cool. So this is... And of course, I shouldn't forget that. Of course, I also give the ghost mole, uh, mail to him before I move. Damn, that's important. Okay, so... And then we do this action. We move there. And we lose this thing, uh, the, the curse, and that's it. These two things don't have any... Um, any effect right now um, to me. 
And again, I'm going to trade away stuff. I'm going to give the ashes. It's now his turn. I'm going to give the ashes to the Valkyrie. I think that makes even more sense. By the way, I discovered a mistake that I did um, pretty much at the beginning of the, ter of the game. I just want to mention it. I could not have activated these two things, and I did that um, because I can only activate them if I suffer a death result. But I activated them when I entered this area and I lost Grace because of the curse. But that is something, um, Grace is not the, losing Grace is not the same as dying. And therefore, I would not have been able to activate this thing. So, cheated a little here, but uh, I didn't know, so therefore, this can happen. Um, yeah, it's now this guy here, and he also uses the ghost mail. So he reduces this by one, and gets one grace. And he's going to draw an event card. Uh, that's a rate. What is that? Hard to see. The dead are seldom organized when they are. It's not good. Hmm. Count the blights in your location. Okay, we got a single blight there, so that means we lose two, two, um, two stealth. That sucks. That's a real problem for me because um, that's a real, real bad thing. Damn it. I'm down to two. Uh, fuck that. And there's nothing I can do. Um, I would even prefer if, if something else, the stealth that this goes down is really bad. Um, however, hmm, hmm, yeah, that's quite a problem now. With a stealth of two, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna bring the necromancer toward me. I don't want that. Hmm. <sighs> Shit. Yeah, that sucks. Well, I guess I have to live with that somehow. This is a real problem now, this raid. There's nothing I can do against that. So yeah, that's... It seems like we're done with uh, the Necromancer. He's gonna follow us probably from now because this is... But the wizard is someone we want to have with us anyway. I mean, I could move to the monastery but it doesn't do me a lot good. I would gain an additional stealth, of course, but I need the wizard. He's a very good fighter, and I thought I want to have him in the village uh, fighting these suckers here. So, boy, that sucks. That is a problem. Gosh, what am I gonna do now? Okay, here's the thing. What I can do is, I can use her power, the blind spots, but only in the next turn to to bring his stealth uh, up again. <sighs> now I'm not sure if I want to. The idea is I might actually leave the wizard in the mountains so that the that the necromancer moves here next turn because he I'm pretty sure he's gonna do, he's gonna see him and then move over there um, so then he would not be in the village which is an advantage to me and then I could move the wizard out get a stealth from doing so and then I could yeah, and then I could use the blind spot anyway. <sighs> hmm. 
Hmm. You know, I'm really considering doing that because I don't want the wizard in the village when all my other guys are there. So, okay, I'm gonna leave the wizard then there. And I think I might then use the gather manor at that point. Because I basically have nothing to do in a certain way. I mean, I could also search, which would be good. But I can also use this gather mana thing. And uh, gotta exhaust that to gain one stealth up to fight and th uh, up to five and three sparks. Mm, okay, why not? Oh, gosh. And I still have this thing here. Mm, but that doesn't really help me against the, the Necromancer for the moment. Okay. So, then... I'm going to give the male... Think to her and when well, I gotta roll for the shades this guy will roll for the shades now hmm okay I'm gonna I'm gonna do a standard roll here. I'm gonna fight with a single die and I hope I get a three. And I did. Very good. Okay, um, so that was his turn. Things are not quite according to the plan anymore. But okay. That's the Valkyrie. And again, I'm gonna simply spend a stealth and regain a grace using the ghost mail. I'm going to draw a card here. That is a vile beast. Is this what the necromancer has wrought? Such an abomination was not meant to exist. Okay, um, hmm. We could elude here with four dice, or we could fight with five dice. Guess I want to fight, and uh, not with five dice. With uh, uh, we got to elude against a four. That's what I meant. Or we could fight against a five. I think I will have to fight uh, to fight here. Um, hmm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Not too happy about that, uh, to be honest. Oh boy. What is this? Um, oh yeah, that, that allows me to ignore the effect of blights. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, that is pretty cool. Actually, I think I want to use that now. Um, you'll see why in a minute. Well, do I? Hmm. The idea is to move in here. I could at least, but I have a ton of grace here. Mm, that's, this is all complicated, man. Still, yeah, um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try to to fight this thing with two dice, and I need a five. Maybe I can do it. Now, I could use my death from above, but then I would lose another stealth. Not sure if I want that. I don't think so. 
And I did it. Very good, very good. Okay, so I was lucky here. And now we're going to move. And, hmm. Do I want to spend this thing now? Ah, actually, I would. I gain a blight, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, I gain a spark. Very good, very good. That's cool. And if I move down here, at least I would not lose something. But it might be worth more for the wizard, maybe. I think I'm going to give that to the wizard. Ah, there's a lot of complex stuff going on here. Once we're down there, maybe uh, we don't lose anyway. A lot of tough things. I'm going to move with her and I'm going to spend this thing to save myself the loss of a... Um, of a grace. But I will leave the ghost mail with the wizard. Um, and then I'm gonna move. Gives me a stealth. I'm not gonna lose a uh, grace because of the curse, because I use this um, the cursed ashes. And then I'm gonna spend. Um, I'm gonna spend a grace. Uh, to get rid of the nightmares here, and that allows me to get a charm. <clears throat> okay, which is basically a reroll. Now I gave the I gave this uh, the ghost mail to the wizard because then I can use it next turn. The taint doesn't allow me to get oops. It doesn't allow me to get any grace. So um, if for any reason I get not rid of that, I cannot use the ghost mail then in the village to. Uh, generate myself grace and therefore it makes more sense for the wizard to have it especially because he's gonna move anyway which then um, will give him another stealth if he spends one now to use this ghost mail so I'm babbling a lot of strange things right now, but uh, there's so much going on now, and then you wanna, you really wanna try to to coordinate everything right. So I'm not not fully focused <laughs> all the time on what I'm saying here, but okay, I'm I'm gonna try to do it anyway. Um, okay, so that was her movement, and also her action, of course, because it was the travel. She resolved the the quest. And that's then the end of her turn. Okay. So we're done. And for the first time for a while, our party is kind of split up a little bit. Uh, we'll see how bad that is going to be. Um, okay. Then it's the necromancer's turn, and of course the darkness goes one step ahead. And now, if he rolls a four, he will see the wizard. So that's kind of likely that this happens, but of course it's not necessary. So we'll see. And he rolls only a two, so actually he sees nobody. That is cool. Question is, where is he going to move? Ah, he moves into the village. That sucks. 
Um, hmm. Now I have the option now. I could roll the visions of death at that point. Or I could activate them. And I think I want to, or deactivate them. And I think I actually want to do that. Because, first of all, there's quite a chance when I fight now the Blights that I suffer a death. And then I can activate them anyway. <laughs> So it's kind of a win-win situation, right? Either I can activate them or I, um, I destroy a Blight. And the other thing is that, yeah, I think I really don't want the Wizard in the Village for now. So I, I'm going to deactivate that thing. And that allows me to roll a second die. Oh, f well, that's a one. Let's see where he goes. Okay, that's a one. So he still doesn't see anyone. And this time he moves here. And that is actually... Uh, I wonder if it actually works this way. Can I then choose a result? Interesting question. I think I can. Hmm. Otherwise, it would make no sense. Let me check that. Okay, here it's actually a little tricky because it just says deactivate after any die roll to add one die. So that definitely means I can use that also for the die roll of the ne Necromancer. Usually, if you do it during a test, it's pretty obvious you even have a success or not you know you, you I mean yeah that makes sense but it doesn't say to pick a result or something if you got two different results so in this case it's a little unclear am I allowed to do it or not the rules don't say that I am and um, in usually if you have event cards or so where you where you roll a die, in case you, you add one, like this one, roll one die and pick one, you know, there it's pretty uh, obvious, you can then simply choose a result. Um, but in this specific case here, it doesn't say that anywhere. So, <laughs> it's not quite clear which result, but I think I can also pick one, otherwise it would not make a ton of sense. So I'm going to move this guy down here into the swamp and I'm going to generate a blight there. Hope it's not a bad one. So let's see. Now that is a curse. That is fine because I'm not probably not planning to go to move into the swamp anyway. Um, let's find that one. There we go. Uh, it's pretty much a no-go area anyway. We have now the curse and all these um, these creatures there. Uh, so, like the forest, this is not where you want to hang out. Okay. But all that is cool now. Um, if this action here with the visions of death was legal, um, but I think it makes sense and sometimes you simply have to follow a yeah some common sense here if the rules are not so clear on that okay um, and we got to place a time marker here on that quest okay so we're gonna start this time with a wizard and again, I'm going to use the ghost mail to raise his grace one space and draw an event card. And it says, call to action. A crystallized moment. Your path stretches before you, bright as dream and sharp as loss. Okay, gain a spark. That's, sh that's shame because uh, I already have three and you're not allowed to have more than that. 
Draw a quest and roll one die to determine its location, then add a tarm time marker to it. Okay, so let's see. These are skeletal patrols. Skeletons are making increasingly hold, bold forays into this area. Drive them off before they can establish a lasting foothold. Okay, um, let's see. I mean, we get a treasure chest if we do it. If it expires, it will bring up a skeleton's blight. So depending where that is, it might bring some problems. And... Um, but we only need a single success. Uh, the fight of four. And we got four turns left. So that is probably okay. And it's in the village, which is not a bad thing, actually. It's not a bad thing at all. Good way to maybe get some treasure chest here. So. Um, yeah, okay, I'm simply going to move over here to the village. Going to lose one grace because of the curse. And uh, I'll then get another stealth. And before I go, I actually give this. Mm, no, I can't. Well, I could give it to the bard, but it doesn't really help him because he is already at his maximum, um, at his maximum grace. So um, he might as well keep it. Okay. Um, yeah. Then. We're done with his action. And then I'm going to move the Bard or activate him. And uh, well, first we also have to draw an event card, of course. It says Dark Scrying. That looks like a bad one. You feel the spell coiling around you, wrapping tighter with each pass. Soon you will know precisely where you are. Spend one grace or lose two stealth. I'm going to go with the grace. Um, so that goes away. Well, on the other hand, hmm. Yeah, I think I will. I think I will do it that way. Um, I'm still in a pretty good shape. Then I will finally activate my rousing melody again. Deactivate all melodies and optionally activate. Take a free action. And. Oh, fuck it. Ah, shit. I forgot when I move in here. Shit, that was stupid. I didn't see that, I didn't read that. I cannot allow that to happen, actually. So I think, I mean, that was simply a mistake. I didn't see that thing. So therefore, I'm gonna go back here. Because otherwise, just because I didn't know that, that would kind of um, fuck up my whole plan. No, I can't do it that way. Actually, I have to start with one of these. And uh, so, let's assume this still happens. Um, you know what, I'm actually, I'm going to leave it with him. So that there is, but I'm going to start him later. It's a little bit of cheating, I, I agree. But, you know, I mean, I just didn't read that carefully enough so that was just a stupid mistake basically instead what I want to do is I want to uh, first destroy the curse because otherwise um, I cannot I cannot enter here with this thing active 
and that would be pretty nasty. So therefore, I want to start with... Um, eh, fuck it. I'm going to do it anyway. You know, it was just a stupid mistake. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push on here. Oh boy, it sucks. Yeah, so I cannot activate the rousing melody, melody this turn. Instead, what I'm going to do is simply going to move in here. And yeah, that was a mistake, of course, and I'm going to lose one. But okay, um, should have been more careful here, obviously. So, um, that's the end of his turn, and then it's the, uh, I'm going to play the Valkyrie, and now the curse is actually not that bad anymore, because now we're all in. So I think now I might actually go for the Taint, or for the Corruption, uh, probably for the Corruption, because if I manage to destroy that, um, I'd be able to use that bonus here, and otherwise I can't do it. So therefore, I think I want to destroy the corruption first here. Okay, but then again, hmm. yeah, but I want to do that. So let's see. Um, I'm going to use the... First, got to draw a card. i got to draw an event. Oh, boy. That says midnight. It's a seven. I didn't even know it that, can get that worse. The dead do not rest, plus one darkness. Okay, I mean, at the moment, that's not terribly bad. Although it definitely does not help. Um, so, yeah, we're still sitting there. And what I want to do is, let me see, uh, the idea was, and stupid, um, I want to use the death from above, fight with three dice, lose one stealth, and as you deactivate it, sprout wings. So I'm going to use, I'm going to try to destroy the, the, the taint. And what does the corruption do? I think it... No, the corruption was the one with no bonuses. Wait a minute. Uh, that means I cannot gain any... Mm. Okay. I cannot gain any grace. That's the taint and the corruption. So I'm going to attack the corruption. Fight with three dice. So first... I'm going to lose one stealth before, because I'm going to attack. Then I'm going to lose another stealth... Uh, because of this specific card here. And then I can attack with three dice. Now I might add my spark. Um, do I want to do that? Hmm. Ah, oh boy. That's a hard call. I mean, I still have this one, right? To um, Let me see what that gives me. It's a... Discard after making a die roll to re-roll all dice. Yeah, so I can still use the charm if I fuck this up. So um, let's attack the corruption with my three dice here. And I did it. I've got a five here. So the, corrup uh, the corruption goes away. And that means that now when any hero destroys a blight, if this card is active, deactivate it and gain a spark. Otherwise, activate. So now I made it. And because the, the corruption is gone, I can now use the bonus. That was the reason why I, um, why I wanted to do that. So now this soul harvest is, activate, is active. And um, that's pretty much all I can do. Yep. Okay, so then we're going to draw another 
Another event card for the Scout. A Mind Blast. Spend one grace or exhaust all your power. So ooh, this is bad. Everything is white. Then everything is pain. Then everything is blank. Yeah, great. Okay, that sucks, obviously. Um, but I think I'll actually spend that grace. It's, uh, it's a little tricky, but I'm going to do it. Now, if I would die again, I'm, I'm definitely in trouble. But I have options to heal. I can use the ghost mail. But before that, I have to destroy the taint, because that makes it impossible for me to gain um, this stuff. But I also have the rally here, which also um, allows me to gain grace. So um, I could gain two grace pretty quick that way. Um, okay. And as an action, as an action, I want to hide. So I use the blind spots as an action. So I hide and raise the stealth of one hero at your location to your current stealth. And now I want to bring up the, yeah, whose stealth? The Valkyrie or the Wizard? Hmm. I think I'm gonna go with the Valkyrie because I can use all the grace of the of uh, with the wizard because the Valkyrie has a lot of grace so she would be able to bring up the stealth using the ghost mail by spending a grace for example therefore yeah I think I'm gonna gonna use the blind spots and give the wizard that way to stealth. Okay, um, yeah. Hmm, will I? Yeah, I think so. Why not? I, I think I want to do that. So, um, okay. Seems like I'm done here. And uh, it's uh, the Necromancer again, so we're going to rise that by another space. And roll the die, and hmm, we don't want to see the guy here, so we want to bring him either... Would be good if we roll a three. Well, we'll see what we roll, right? That's a five. That's... Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, shit. He sees the Valkyrie. Mm. And there's nothing we can do against that. So, yeah. It seems like the wizard now enters here, or the necromancer enters. Which isn't too great, but okay. I mean, it's not a total disaster. It's not like he attacks us immediately or something. Um, so we will see an evil presence there, which I think is bad for eluding. Mm. Let's see. Yeah, it's minus one die when eluding. Well, that's not too bad. Okay. Still, I kind of like to stay here because I really want to get rid of all this crap. Um, And maybe also fulfill, ah, there will be a, a marker here. I might also want to fulfill the skeletal patrol uh, quest because a treasure chest is a pretty valuable uh, reward here. Okay. So how exactly do I want to do that? Okay, so, um, 
the taint stops me from getting grace. So I guess I want to get rid of this because then I would be again allowed to use my uh, to use my ghost mail. So we need a five to destroy that thing. Um, so before we start. You know, yeah, I mean, tough call. I think I want to do it. I think I want to get rid of this stuff. Because I also have to fight at some point. I have to fight this guy. And then I, it's going to be very hard to do it in a space um, with a lot of blights. So it might be a good idea to have somewhere a space where there are only little. Okay, now let's see. Um, what exactly do I want to do here? I mean, the other option would be to move in here with the wizard. Maybe even with all the guys. And... Hmm. Shit, I don't know. I really don't know. So the thing is that I need six more to get a relic. I really consider moving to the ruins and doing the trials. The wizard is in a very powerful position here. He's got basically twice the time to use the fiend fire. You, he can so he can fight twice with five dice. You can use it once, then exhaust it, use it again. So that's pretty awesome. He's got three of these, three sparks. He can use, technically, if we give him, if we, if we stay together, he has two automatic success when eluding, and he's got a reroll. So he's completely pumped up. And he might be able to actually survive, or not survive, but, but, you know, successfully deal with six event cards. Sounds a little crazy, but, you know, I got a feeling like we might be able to do that. So therefore, maybe I really want to move into the ruins, leave all that crap alone, and, um, you know, do all the stuff there, do my end fight in the ruins, and that's it. And then I'm simply done there. Of course, there is some risk involved. But... I know, it's just so awesome. So yeah, I think actually I want to do that. So... I want to start again with him. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. I'm going to start again with, with him, this time using... And the problem is that I'm... The, this lady is in a very bad shape. And... Because I'm not allowed to use the ghost mail. Oh boy. Okay, I got a feeling it might not even be necessary for the wizard to stay with the others. He is incredibly strong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him all this crap and he's going to go for the trials here. But before we go
Hm. Okay. Ja, das sagst du. Okay, so. I'm gonna draw. Well, we start with the, with the wizard in the same location. If that happens, you're gonna lose one stealth. I'm gonna start with the Amazon. I'm gonna draw an event, and that says anathema. That doesn't sound good. An ache in your gut, a rot in your soul, a stain in the color of lost innocence. Lose one's uh, grace. That's pretty bad. But luckily she is still in a pretty good shape. Okay. Now then, she's going to attack. What is that? That's about eluding. She's going to attack the taint. Because I want want to make it possible for the scoused and the wizard to gain grace. So I'm going to use my skewer because I don't want to lose even more uh, stealth. And I'm going to throw in the blight, uh, the spark. So I've got three dice to roll a five. And I did it. I got a six here. Pretty awesome. So that means the taint goes away. And that also means I can now deactivate the soul harvest and I will get another blight. Okay. So that was my action. Now I want to activate the Bard. And that is a sloppy search. That's not so bad. Two, it's fine. They clearly do not know how to look. Roll one die and take the highest. Okay. So they want to roll at least a four here. Which we didn't. Spend one grace or lose one stealth. Well, hmm. It's tricky. I mean... Hmm. I think I'm actually going to spend a grace. Then... And I will lose a, a stealth anyway because I start with the wizard in the same space. Now then, I'm going to use my rally ability gonna exhaust that and that gives all heroes one grace and that is pretty awesome So that was his action. Now I'm going to do the wizard. And, hmm. Yeah, I'm fine here. I cannot use the ghost mail anyway. So that says deterioration. Uh, the state of the realm is declining rapidly. There's no time to lose. At a time mark to every quest in play. Okay. There is no quest. A new one would appear. But okay, so we'll see a quest. There is a time marker here and another one up there. Okay, cool. Now with the wizard, I'm going to move into the ruins. I don't get a stealth. Do I want to keep the ghost mail with me? That's an interesting question. Um, hmm. I think not, actually. I think I want to give the ghost mail to her so that she can also regenerate her grace, the scout, a little bit. Um, okay, and then...
I have to face that lick and this sucker is pretty dangerous. Uh, it's got a 5 in combat and a 5 in eluding. Um, I think I'm gonna accept a fail here. I don't want to spend all my cool um, all my cool spells and, and, and items and so I really wanna uh, wanna keep them for the trials. So therefore I'm just gonna roll a die here and hope I don't lose. And it's a six. Take that for good omen. So I managed to whatever defend the lick or elude him. So that was his action. And now um, eventually it's the scout and yeah obviously she also wait a minute I think I didn't lose stealth here because I yeah but then I would gain it back for moving because uh, this guy would have lost me one stealth because we start in the same space with him same here so um, yeah we will lose a stealth here and of course draw an event and this is an altar Remnant of a, of a forgotten time. Delicate carvings worn down by age and neglect. Roll one die and take the highest. Okay, let's see what we get. Basically, we want a four to six. Okay. That's a one. That sucks. That allows us now to either spend one grace or plus one darkness. I'm gonna go with the darkness because we're still pretty low and we're near we're close to the end. So I think that's okay. Darkness goes up and now something new happens. There's a darkness of 10 so that means here we gotta draw a darkness card. And darkness cards simply strengthen the necromancer so we'll see what that says. It says here dying land and it really looks Pretty awesome. On the necromancer's turn, if he ends his movement in a location with no blights, he creates an extra blight. Okay, well that is something which has nearly no effect because everything is full of blights, right? So therefore, some are really ugly. Uh, this one isn't too bad at all. Okay, and so it's now still the uh, her, and uh, what is she gonna do? I think she actually wants to try to. Uh, hmm. uh, well, first she she wants to use the ghost mail. So one stealth goes down, and this goes up one space. And then I want to try to attack the skeletal patrols here. It would be pretty awesome to kill them. Um, sadly, I don't have any bonuses, so it's a 50-50 chance. But if I make it, I get a treasure chest. On the other hand, I could search here. I got a plus one die when searching. And skeletons blight in here. It's not a big deal. So, hmm. I might actually do it. Maybe the odds are definitely better if I search and I could also find a treasure chest or maybe um, more, um, more mysteries. So I think I'm actually going to go with a search action here. Um, gives me two dice and we'll see what happens. And we did it. We got actually two successes. So let's see what we find. Oh, look at that. I think this is an artifact. That would be pretty awesome. What is the, the book? What does the book say? I forgot about that. Ah, the Tome of Retraining. Hmm. The Tome of Retraining is also pretty awesome. We could discard one power and take two additional ones. I mean, 
That is cool. On the other hand, we could take an artifact. Oh boy, that's a tough call. It really is. It really is a tough call. I mean, artifacts can be super powerful sometimes. The ghost mail helps us a lot. But, you know, getting two new powers and maybe discarding one not that great power. Something like, I don't know, I mean, there are some which aren't too great. Um, for example, I could, I could discard the treasure maps now. I'm not planning to search a great deal anymore. Yeah, so I think that's actually what I want to do. I'm going to use this, this, this book. I could actually give this to someone else. Let's see. What about this guy? I'm not sure. If he comes up with new melodies, that might in the end not be so super great. Um, because he needs to keep this melody active. And I don't know. What about her? Well, she already has two fight things going on. I really don't know exactly whom I should support here. That's a very tough call. I think I'm going to go with her. The Yeah. This uh, tr the treasure maps are really not that strong anymore. They they were very useful uh, at the beginning, but now they're not that good anymore. So I think I'm going to discard this one and draw two new cards instead. Also, the odds are a little bit higher that we get stronger cards here because we already have seen a few of my weaker cards. So let's see what we got. That is speed. Elude with one die and add one to your highest die. Exhaust after rolling to add two to your highest die. Could be helpful. And the trailblazer. Any here in adjacent location may travel to your location as a free action. That's fucking awesome. That's exactly the card I was looking for. Um, yeah, that's just that's just amazing. That's a very, very strong card. I think that's one of her best cards at all. Because now we can move with her here and basically get all the other guys also here as a free action and then in the same time attack these, uh, these blights. Uh, so that is really, really cool. Okay, so that was her search action, and uh, that means we're now at the end uh, of this turn. So this goes up one space, I'm going to place another time marker, one here, another one here, and then I'm going to roll a die. For, this, for the necromancer and he sees all of us except the wizard. That's kind of cool. So that means he's going to stay there. And the wizard has time to do his stuff in the ruins. And he's going to create a new blight in the village. And these are going to be spies. There we go. Uh, that says lose one stealth each turn. I assume that happens at the end of the turn, but I'm not positive. Exactly that's the case. Um, we have to face the spies at the end of the turn. So if things go as we planned, we're gonna move out, we're gonna move out now all uh, anyway, and uh, then we won't have to face them anymore. So I think this is a good time to, to, to stop it and to, to load it up, simply because this is a pretty cool cliffhanger. The, the wizard's going to try to uh, push through the trails here. As I said, he's in a really good shape, you know, he's got a, um, yeah, he's got these, these the, the fiend fire, which he can technically use two times. And that allows him to fight with five dice. He's got three of these. Three sparks. He's got two automatic successes when eluding. And he's got uh, the charm that allows him to re-roll um, all dice. So, um, 
yeah, I mean, I guess we are in a very strong position there. In addition to that, we're going to now be able to move the scout here. And from then on, we can bring all the other guys also there, basically for free. And then they can attack immediately these two, um, these two blights. So, if we're doing good, we'll be able to clean out this um, this area of blights. And if the wizard is doing good, and I think there's a real chance he is, I mean, you never know, of course. Some are just, uh, you know, if we draw some crap like, I don't know, where, yeah, I mean, if we draw something like this, you know, okay, I mean, lose one grace, you know, then it sucks. But um, on the other hand, you know, that card is already gone. It might be somewhere in there. Uh, I think there all the, most of the cards are there twice or so, but I'm not sure about that. <clears throat> but if we are a little lucky, <coughs> maybe we can manage to get quite a lot of these... Um, these clues, in addition, we can also search the ruins. There is this three times the number of clues thing going on. So I think there are good thoughts that we'll be able to um, find our ten clues in the ruins and kill the blight. And then if the wizard comes or if the, if the necromancer comes into the ruins, because he will probably see us by then, we can give him a warm welcome. There's also a relic right here, so <coughs> excuse me, I guess um, we're on a good way to win this game. So, hope to see you on the next video or on lonesomegamer.com. Bye!